Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be looking at MX Linux again. This is the second time I've looked at it. Only this time I want to look at the latest release, which came out on November the 10th. This will be MX19.3, right after this. So, but <laughs> I'm sure other people will be looking at the the uh, standard version, but I really want to look at the advanced hardware edition, or uh, actually it's called ha har advanced hardware support, or H uh, AHS, and so that has the a more modern kernel and a 5.8 kernel. So uh, I, that's the one I'm going to be looking at today. So if you're wondering why I'm coming up with this 5.8 kernel, that's why I'm using a different ISO than the standard one. But MX Linux, just, just to back up for a second and explain what it is, it is a distribution that is based on Debian 10 Buster, that is the 19 version, uh, stable. Uh, but it does include some core uh, components from Anti-X Linux which is another distribution, they share some history, and so there are components that they draw still from that distro. MX Linux offers a choice of XFCE or KDE as your desktop environment, and they have also included a, a unique Fluxbox Im implementation in the past that continues, only you don't have to download Fluxbox uh, separately. It, you can... Uh, it is now included with the XFCE, both on the standard and on the AHS ISO. So, uh, and I think that is new with 19.3. Uh, <clears throat> but MX Linux, what is it? What, what is it? What was the, what was the purpose behind it? Well, it's designed for high stability and solid performance. Those are always good goals to have in any distribution. I don't think anybody would agree, oh yeah, I want something that's unstable and slow. Uh, but uh, um, those are good goals to have. And as long as those are in the forefront, you can, you can pretty much bet that MX Linux will always have that kind of support. Uh, the initial release for MX Linux was in 2014, but at the time it was an offering under the Anti-X Linux, I believe, and if memory serves me correctly, MX Linux first came out on its own in 2016, so it became its own standalone ISO. Uh, and of course, this was released just recently, uh, just a few days ago, in fact. Uh, <clears throat> however, if you want to install 19.3 and you already have an MX19 installation, whether it be .1 or .2, probably you probably already have .2, you don't have to do anything. You can just update uh, without reinstalling from the, re the repositories to get this release. Now, I don't think that will automatically upgrade you to AHS, and I'm not quite sure if you have to reinstall for that or whether you can just re you can just install the kernel over it. That's a question I don't know the answer to. Um, standard MX comes with 4.19.6, however. Um, and the advanced support, as I said, 5.8. MX Linux includes a lot of MX tools, uh, one of which is the uh, MX, uh, the MX, I think it's the MX Package Manager, and there's also a kind of a broad brush uh, uh, application space that, that under the MX Tools umbrella, it has all of them in there. One of the tools in there is MX Snapshot, and MX Snapshot is kind of cool. At least I think so. It allows you to take your live session with all your settings and all your users and all the directories and all the files and just bundle it up and create an ISO file out of it. So <clears throat> if you want to be able to stick that on a, on a USB stick or you want to move it, off, maybe you were running it on a virtual machine and now you want to try it on hardware. I don't know if that works. I'm going to try that. Not today, but I'm going to try that down the road. Uh, but, you know, you can certainly create a fully bootable image that you can then uh, use on a USB stick or whatever. Uh, but that image, like I said, maintains everything that you did under that live session, so it's all preserved. MXKDE is a different ISO, and that is 5.15 KDE Plasma. It also is based on MX19.3 Advanced Hardware Support, so you are going to get a 5.8 kernel with that. Uh, <clears throat> all three releases, the base and the um, advanced hardware support and the KDE all come with Firefox 
uh, 82.0.3 at the time that I'm doing this video. However, if you go to the MX package installer and you look under browsers, there's a whole list, and we'll do that today. We'll go through some of that with, uh, with you so you can see the number of browsers that are available so you can pick out the ones that you like the best. That's what it's all about, right? Choice. LibreOffice Suite version 6152 is included. Uh, it is, that is a little bit older release, but it is stable and it is good. One thing I am going to comment on is System D. It is included, but it is not in, it is not enabled. So they use a there's a System D shim that they use to help out the application helpers uh, that are used uh, by the services, um, so that you get the same functionality without actually having to use System D. Um, <clears throat> by default. So, uh, MX Linux, you can enable it. You can turn System D on if you. That's something you really want to do. But they default to using System Five in it, and uh, and it's kind of good to see kind of the original Linux back. Uh, just from a personal standpoint, I grew up with the writers of System Five in it, and I know why they did, chose to do things they did. Uh, so uh, yeah, I have an appreciation for that. But you may not share that, and that's fine. This is what this is all about, right? If you like System D, you can put it on there. If you don't like System D, you can leave it off. Um, the minimums for this release are CDN USB capable of a boot device, of becoming a boot device. You need a i686 or better processor. Of course, that's an Intel nomenclature, but I, I don't remember. It's been so long back in which AMD processor that matched up to, but... Uh, 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 you'll need one gig of memory, six gig of uh, disk space. And if you're going to use this as a live USB, you'll need about a four gig uh, USB stick or greater. Um, and then the recommended is the same. The CD is the same. The processor is the same. But you'll need to add an additional gig of memory. So a total of two. 20 gig of disk space is recommended. And um, if you're going to use your live USB with persistence enabled, about eight gig should do it. So you don't need a, a really, uh, although the, the prices of USB sticks today, 64 gig isn't very expensive. Uh, you'll need a, they recommend a 3D capable graphics card. Um, and that, you know, if you're going to game, obviously you're not going to use the inbuilt Intel one or or one of the uh, 4400 or 4300G uh, <laughs> processor based ones. You'll probably use a discrete graphics card to game with. Uh, but, uh, and then you'll need some kind of sound device, of course, if you're going to do that as well. Uh, and also take advantage of some of the notification sounds. And if you want to watch videos or listen to music, yeah, you probably want to do that too. So let me get set up and, uh, and we'll go and, and do an install of the Advanced Hardware Support Edition in just a second. Okay, I'm back and I'm, uh, let's do a create VM, our usual thing. And uh, this is MX193 AHS. I'll go my, do my usual dance to go find the NAS. And you'll see I have, uh, I don't have the KDE edition. I didn't try that yet. Uh, I might get to that, but uh, to, for today, the AHS one. Uh, I am going to be using Spice again. And I am not putting this on the Gluster Cluster. <laughs> we might be waiting all day for it to install. Gluster is is uh, is good as an iSCSI device, but not so good for VMs. Uh, Ceph is better for that. I, I'm sure that the Gluster dev developers would say, "Oh no, you can configure it." Yeah, I could. <laughs> you could configure anything if you want to, if you have enough time. <laughs> Enough time and enough money, you can configure anything any way you want. I'm just waiting on this to complete. I think it's done. Uh, let's go ahead and start it. And yep, there's my vert manager. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and hit enter and let it come up into the live. You uh, ISO mode. Has a little bit different look than the previous 19.2. A little bit different background anyway. 
Uh, yeah, the same if you want to read about it. The, you can look through the FAQs. There's the user manual. I think that user manual is 19.2, but I, uh, in all honesty, I, I'm sure a lot of that, most of that probably applies. Uh, there's a wiki. There's information about the tools. And there also is a, a MX Tweaks, and we'll be looking at that today as well. So, it, yeah. So I'm just going to close that, and we'll go right here to the installer. You notice I'm just doing a single click, which is its default. Uh, and then, yeah, it's picking up my keyboard settings. I can repartition the drive, or I can just auto stall on the on the entire drive. Being lazy and being in a VM, there's not much advantage to separating the partitions since it's all hitting the same drive as the other VMs on the system that are using that drive. I, uh, I did hook up the ZFS. I am moving my ZFS pool over to Linux. So I have already started that. Oh, I guess I can go on. Can I? I don't have to wait for this. I always forget that, that I don't have to wait on this. Uh, I guess I better call it MX. Yeah, yeah. Do I really want that? I, well, I guess the, you might. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have Windows installed anywhere. Well, not true. I do have one VM that has Windows on it, which is right there. You can see that. So you could call me a liar because I do have it. I have it because I'm, I have been using uh, Windows subsystem for Linux. Learn more about it. There we go. Uh, one thing about this, um, the after this installs, it will default to every time it's asking you for permissions for an administrative user. It is not the sudo, it's not the username by default, it is root that it's looking for. So just it, when you're installing packages or you're gonna do configuration tweaks, just remember that you, you we're going to show you how to change that. I'm going to show you how to change that. So I hope I hope I will. Hope I remember to do it. All right, I'll be back. This will take a bit, not too long, but it'll take a little bit. It's done, and it took less than two minutes to install on this on, on the VM. Not very long at all. So and this is selected to automatically reboot. So if I hit finish, it's going to reboot the system. I'm going to uh, pull this down a little so I can see what it's saying here. Because in a second, it's going to ask me to eject the CD, which I'm going to do in a uh, software way. Yeah, I'm sorry. I st <laughs> because I am in the middle of migrating. Uh, yeah, that machine is still busy. So it might be a while. At least probably until, hopefully not until Christmas. But okay, so we're booted off the disk. And I'm not going to wait for the countdown. Okay, so I guess the first thing we better do is get my... Yeah, it does the same thing here. So I need, I, I, yeah, that's the desktop settings. What I need, probably system display. No, settings display. I need display settings. There we go. So I want, I'm going to do 16900. That seemed to work pretty nicely. Yeah, that looks a little better. Although the, the conky menu didn't show, didn't go over, but we'll fix that. So, uh, I guess, <laughs> I guess the, uh, the first place we need to start here is to go to a terminal, uh, the transparent window. Well, I'm going to fix that. Uh, you know, it, you can, if you like that, that's great. Uh, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that, but, um.
try and make this a little bit bigger for you to see what I'm doing as usual and then we'll go in here one of these is there's the train opacity right there I'm just gonna slide that up till it's totally opaque and just cover that background up if you want to adjust the colors you can this is kind of a nice bash this is bash and this is kind of a nice little thing they've got going here like that um, I, I guess the first thing to do is well I guess we shouldn't do it that way we should let it tell us because it'll this little box down here will turn green when it has something for us to do so I guess let's just do the first things that we always do 5.8.0-3 and that was compiled the October the 25th so that came from now that says 5.8.14 from Debian so and then we'll do the see what I'm gonna guess that this is probably using the some of the packages from Debian and so some of as we've seen some of them are a little older that were up there like the LibreOffice suite and so forth are a little older although then you have some like Firefox which are more recent so I think they're kind of mixing some of them in um, so uh, the first thing I want to do is uh, I guess we should change that to Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and see what kind of wallpaper we got. And we'll start our customization run here. Quite a few. Quite a lot. Now, some of these are the older ones. Um, that's a nice one right there. I think I will stay with that one for now. And then... Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's go do our let's go do our changes in the MX tools. This is where you'll find things like this is the live USB maker. This is the snapshot tool, and so the first thing probably I will do on this one. Yeah, so you see it's asking for permission the root password so if you're used to some of them where they're you know based on sudo then this is not that way although we can change that so I'm going to get rid of this countdown now you may not want to uh, if you're you know if you run into some kind of issue with the boot then <laughs> you're going to be stuck really quick um, but uh, you might you might want to have leave that alone. In my case, I don't really care. This is on a VM, so uh, all I have to do is roll back to it from a snapshot. Whereas that would be a little harder for you, maybe. Um, I think the rest of that is fine. So let's see what else. What other damage we can do? So it should root rescue scan menu editor you adding users. What's in here? Oh, my categories. Okay. I assume that's for... Okay. Yeah. All right. That's for the, I guess, the the application packages. Uh, so if I want to, if I want to install, now I don't have a, a, a NVIDIA card on that box, but, oops. And then it will say it's exiting. So, uh, Codex, if I want those. I don't, I know I don't. Uh, I probably will install mine one by one. But if you just want, I'm going to go ahead and install them because I'm sure, I'm almost dead sure it's going to do exactly what it did last time. I put the flash ones out here. Uh, and then there's a conky. We can we can change that up a little bit. So let me. Um, 
Let me see what themes and what widgets they have. So let me get this <clears throat> out of the way. That one's kind of nice. It's always the default one, I guess, but not one I want. So let's see. Let's see what we got. There's one that you can kind of, that's from Anti-X, that's, and I kind of like, it's kind of plain, but it's, not that one. It's been a while since I've been in MX. That's the default one. We did that one already. Let's see. Let's see. Digital barbecue, I think it's really big. B uh, BBQ, yeah. Ah, that one's not so bad. That one, there's the, yeah, that's not so bad. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I kind of like that. I'm a nerd, so I like that. Uh, let's see what other choices we have. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in here. There's a couple of these that allow you to build it up. There it is, many roads. So I can start out with a CPU, and then if I want to put the system time over to the, to the left of it, I can do that. Add on disk use or memory or network. So it kind of gives you options on how you want to build things up. If, if you don't want that big block of time, you can just take that right out of there. Uh, that one's not too bad either. Um, I don't know if I need all that. I mean, I, I mean, my network, I'm gonna, I don't really care about that. I track that differently, so I don't need to track it on the machine. Um, memory's good to know uh, what's going on. That looks a little squished up, though. Yeah. So let's turn off the disk and put the memory underneath of it. Um, but probably can go in and modify these and then push it down a little bit so that there's some space between the two uh, to do that or just go back to there's one here this one is like a full yeah I th the, that's okay but I don't really I'm not crazy about the red probably would go in and modify that one as well so uh, I'm gonna go back up here I'm gonna turn this one off I'm gonna go back up here and use the one I had on the, the barbecue. Yeah, I think that's the one I'm going to leave on. So, uh, if you want to theme it, you, you know, you can you can uh, get in there and do that if you want. That's going to be all command line stuff, though. Let's see, what else we got? Time and date. Select sounds, system sounds, brightness, system, welcome, system locale. There was hmm, package installer. Now that should be MX package. We'll look at that one in a minute. Hang on just a second. I'm going to go check something. Okay, let's go look at um, let's go look at the tweak tool here a little bit. Maybe we'll get this themed up a little bit better. So let's see. We got MX dark. With thick borders. I think you have to apply these. Yeah. Okay. So if you're having trouble, you know, grab it like I always do. You can set that up a little bit. Uh, if you're having screen tearing issues, you can adjust uh, this, the B blank rate. Um, probably more so with NVIDIA. Uh, there is that yeah fractional scaling right there that was also on the display settings so if you want to disable single click and go to double you can just do that um, and this one if you want to switch your authentication back to your user ID you can do that so I'm going to do that one And then we have some panel manager settings. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I can adjust the, well, let's, let's make that a little bit wider. I don't know, let's see. That's good, 38's good. 
opacity items yeah that's okay one thing is though I do want to do I think that was in tweaks yeah so I want to put mine on the bottom there we go yeah that you know there's that's always controversial because if you have it on the left or the right is is fine and that takes up that leaves you more real estate but if you put it on the bottom then you lose those pixels to your horizontal part of the display which of course is the shorter of the two dimensions so uh i just prefer it at the bottom uh, but you may prefer it on the left or the right or maybe even the top and you can do that set my window manager to match and there's my keyboard shortcuts you can change those focus or how you want that to work let's see what's in appearance ah that's fine but you may choose to maybe you want new mix or something like that you know maybe you want that I don't know why you would want that. That's pretty bright. Uh, I think I'll put it back. <laughs> um, yeah, the problem is with these high, um, these high, uh, net, these high net displays. They're blinding at night. They uh, or even in the daytime too, for that matter. So this looks a little better. Quick system info. Oh, well. All the hardware. Nice. All in one place. I like that. Let's see. So, one thing. Yeah, you know, this is the whisker menu, of course. And the categories. I, I don't know. Some people like that. I don't. So, I don't. <laughs> I think I'm going to change mine over to put them next the other way around so that my categories are first there like that and then if you want yeah something usually I'll come in and modify this as well so that the icon is taking up the amount of space between the two you know the two lines so that I can get a little bit better view of the icon so uh, but you know again it's up to you how you want to do things um, as let's just see if we have yep we do have the update is showing here so we'll click on that and then it asks me if I it tells me what I'm gonna upgrade and then it asks me to do that and then I'll have to authenticate this time it should be for my user ID Ooh, no Yes, for the user ID this time. So I just checked it to see if the root would work first, and nope, it didn't. So we'll go ahead and install that. That's done. One thing, um, I usually install either check restart or needs restart. Um, needs restart's a little better because it'll actually tell you, you know, is it what, what it is that's causing the restart, whereas check restart, you have to go down through this list of all of the services that that is and it won't even tell you you know it doesn't tell you things like oh well, your kernel change will obviously you got to restart needs restart does so and it will also do that if you're on the command line and you're using an, an apt command to install your packages it will come back and actually list you know the kernel change this package had these dependencies and that affects this other stuff and so you need to restart so it's kind of a nice little utility if you want to do that that is pretty much my look at this. Um, I, I, you know, MX is, I, I have a, this cranky laptop that I'm currently running pop on. I ran MX on for almost, oh, I guess, probably six months or so. And it, it's a great, it's a great distribution. Um, the, the only reason why I left MX was because I needed support 
for Thunderbolt 3 because I was putting up the, some more hardware on this box that required Thunderbolt 3, and, and it was there, but it wasn't very functional. It wasn't very stable on 419. Um, it got better as they fixed some of the bugs uh, in it, and also there was some things that Intel did in order to make Thunderbolt uh, more easily accessible by uh, uh, by pushing some of their more proprietary stuff into their into the larger space, so it made it a lot better. Anyway, that's a different story. Hope you enjoyed this today. If you did, please like and subscribe. I think MX Linux. My bottom line on it is I I have always liked it. I think it's a great distribution. Uh, and again, just like Linux Mint, you can start out with MX Linux if, if you're a new user. You can work your way up. There's, there's, you can customize this thing. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do something, didn't I? I forgot to do two things. Oh, I'm so bad. All right, so we're gonna go back. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, uh, I forgot something. Yeah, I did. So I wonder, can I do a Alt T? Okay, well, we can do it that way. I, for, I forgot to do something. So, H top. Now, I I need what I should do is reboot this. So let me do that. Let me do that. So let's get it clean so that we know exactly what it's doing. Yeah, I didn't look at the memory that I was using, and I didn't look at the hard disk, and I didn't run Linus, so can't get out of this yet uh, I'll put myself back up here though trying to get away and you can't do it all right now I thought I had put oh well okay so H top 554 meg that's, that's pretty good. I mean, I would think, but, you know, I have installed some stuff uh, on this while we were going through it. I The other thing I didn't show you, I, I kind of messed up here. I got off on a tangent, and I didn't cover some of the really cool stuff. So um, let, me, uh, let me fix that. So let's go to the, let's go back into this. And we'll go into the package installer. Now that's semantic, I think. No, that is the MX package installer. So this is what I was telling, saying that you know it's categorized by kind of the ones that are the most commonly installed. So you you have a choice of uh, your audio if you like Audacious or Audacity, Deadbeat for your audio player. It comes with Clementine, so that that's kind of heavy, uh, but it's all right. But it's it is big. If you want Chromium and you want Brave, you can put those on, and you just select the ones you want. And when you're all done, you just you just hit install. Uh, I haven't seen this in a long time. Waterfox. I used to run Waterfox years ago, and uh, just stopped using it for some reason. I think it got a little buggy, or maybe the developer went on hiatus for a while. I don't quite remember, but it, they. Uh, it's been a long time. Waterfox has been around almost. I think they came out about a year or two after Mozilla released Firefox. There was, I think, a, you know, as all packages go, right? There's a split. Somebody wants to do something. Somebody disagrees, and they go, "Oh, I'm just going to fork Mozilla Firefox, and we'll create Waterfox." And that's exactly what happened. Uh, anyway, so that's that part. You can go in here, and Synaptic is also. If you want uh, more fuller package support, you can go into Synaptic and do that. So, all right, now, disk space. 5.6 gig, and I think Git is installed already. Yep.
I don't know what this will be. Uh, we're just going to find out together. I did, haven't run it uh, in a while, and I have not run it on this version. So, yeah, System 5 in it. And no warnings about System D vulnerabilities. Wow. How nice. How refreshing. Oh, sorry. But, you know, if you're interested in security, you don't want stuff like that running on your machine. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, if you want to leave your system open to uh, possible malware, go right ahead. If they had a server version of this, I would put it up in a minute, in a heartbeat. And if they had an ARM version of this, that would be the end of, of, uh, of all the ones using System D. But, all right, I'm back off my soapbox. I'm shutting up. So let's see, what was the total here before we get by? 62. That's pretty typical lately with Debian. I mean, like the last one I just did with the with the Android HC4, that's exactly where it came out. And no warnings. It's just there's a lot of services that need to be hardened. Now, that's interesting. Why are you coming up saying this? Because it's seeing the shim. Interesting. Okay. So... Yeah, 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 yeah. Put up a firewall, turn off all this stuff, turn on all these collectors. Nothing here that's really earth shaking or earth shattering. So, yeah, I mean, clearly it's complaining because there are just some things that are missing. But you know, if I push this through my normal hardening, I should be able to easily get it up to 88 and then with additional hand hand tweaks because I'm too lazy to go put those into the automation script. Um, anyway, that's that's all. I'm going to end it there. That's that, I did my required work. I'm sorry. I, I was just trying to get away. I don't know why. But hope to see you all again real soon. And please like and subscribe. And um, yeah, uh, see you next time. Bye for now.